the next thing we're going to cover is going to be under tools system preferences this is a global setting so it only needs to be set once the first tab that you will see is your job statuses tab now we allow you to color code your jobs so that when you take a look at your calendar just by looking at the color of the job it can kind of tell you as a quick reference what the status of that particular job is in order to change the color of a job status all you have to do is click on the color palette on the right and it will open up a little dialog box with all the available colors we have if you want to get in depth or define a specific color just click on the define custom color and you can choose which exact color you would like the next tab is the job settings tab this is the default setting for when brand new jobs are entered into the RB8 system here is the start time and the end time so for example if you guys normally start your jobs off at 7 o'clock or 8 o'clock in the morning we recommend that you set it to 5 or 6 because when you take a look at your job and it's starting at 5 it'll give a little internal warning saying set the job time correctly same thing with the end time below is your starting job number you can start your job number off at any number you'd like from the RB8 system you can continuously go forward but you cannot revert back so for example if you guys are starting your job number off at a hundred thousand and a couple years down the line you see that it's too much and you guys want to revert it back to a hundred you will not be able to you can start off at a hundred and a couple years down the line you can expand it to a hundred thousand so you can always go forward but you cannot revert it back the next field below you're going to see where it says calendar manager show assigned resources on calendar manager normally you want to keep this box checked the reason why you want to keep this box checked is because when you take a look at your jobs in your calendar manager you want to be able to see who that assigned resource is the only reason why you might not want to keep this box checked is if you are trying to search for all jobs within the past couple of years then showing the assigned resource would be another query column that they have to run through and it'll just take a little bit more time the last field below is weekly view now in the RB8 system you have three different views to look at the calendar you have the list view the weekly view and the monthly view when you're taking a look at the job in the weekly view this is basically the format of how the job will be displayed so when you hover over the job it's going to show you the start time the job number and either the case name the firm the contact the firm and contact the witness or the location name it's your choice the next tab is the SMS server. This is for your text messaging. Um, it's automatically integrated in the RB8 system, so you do not have to worry about this tab. Everything's already taken care of for you. The next tab below is the confirmation email. This is for when you're sending out job confirmations to your clients. This is what will be in the subject, and this is what will be in the body of the email going out for your job confirmations. Now, as you see here, it's going to say job date, then in parentheses, job period, job date. What this is, is a merge field. So instead of it saying job period, job date, it's going to actually take the data from RBA and replace it and enter it in here. So it will be something like job date semicolon 10,000. In order to add merge fields, all you have to do is go to actions, add data field, and you can select which data field you want to insert in the body or the subject of the email. The next tab is your cancellation email. Just like your job confirmations, this is the settings for when you're sending out job cancellations to your clients. This is what will be in the subject, and this is what will be in the body of the emails going out. Again, just like the job confirmations, you can add merge fields to the body or the subject of the email. All you have to do is go to actions, add data field, and select which merge field you would like to use. The next tab is the worksheet email tab. This is for when you're sending out worksheets to your reporters for the jobs. This is what will be in the subject and this is what will be in the body of the emails. Just like the job confirmation and the job cancellation, you can enter merge fields by going to actions and adding the data field. Attachment file type. This is for when you're trying to attach any sort of file along with the resource worksheets going to your reporters. You have to specify which file type you want to allow by hitting add or remove and then just check the box of whichever files you want to allow. By default the notice should be in there but if you want to add another file type just go ahead and check the box and then hit save and close. 
At the very bottom, the worksheet SMS message settings. This is for when you're sending out text messages along with the emails for your resource worksheets. This is what's going to be in the body of the text message. Again, you're allowed to add merge fields to the text messages by going to Actions and adding the data fields. The next tab is the Invoices tab. If you take a look at the top, these are your options for your invoices. If you want to specify on the invoice that the copy is a certified copy, go and check this box. If you want to print your client's phone number and fax number on the invoice, go and check the box to the right. If you want to always archive, which you should, keep this box checked. Now when you're archiving, what that means is you're sending the invoice to your repository so that it stores on your server. Down below, this is the invoice message settings for when you're sending out emails to your clients for their invoices. This is what's going to be in the subject and this is what's going to be in the body of the emails for the invoices. Just like any emails going out to your clients, you can add merge fields by going to actions and add the data field. Below you're going to see where it says starting invoice number. Just like your jobs within the RBA, you can start your invoices off at any number you'd like. You can continuously go forward, but you cannot revert back. The next tab is your payables tab. This is basically how you want to pay your reporters within the RBA system. So if you are waiting a fixed number of days, whether it's 30 days, 45 days, 60 days, you want to go ahead and select the hard weight. If you guys are not waiting any fixed days and you're just going to pay them straight out, select the soft weight. Next tab is your statements tab. Again, at the top is your options for your statements. If you would like to print your client's phone number and fax number on the statements, go and keep this box checked. If you want to keep your print toner in save mode, go and keep the box on the right checked. Below is your emails going out to your clients for their statements. This is what's going to be in the subject, and this is what's going to be in the body of the emails going out to your clients. Again, just like any other emails, you can always add merge fields by going to Actions, and adding the data field. The next tab is your NACHA tab. Now what the NACHA or the ACH tab is, is we allow you in the RBA to do direct deposit to your reporters. If you guys are interested in doing direct deposit, make sure you get the top bank information from your bank and we can assist you guys with setting up the rest of it. The next tab is your message center. This is how often you would like to clean up your message center. You can specify from anywhere from 10 days to 60 days. If it exceeds the number of days you have set in here, it's going to automatically delete the message that you have in your message center. Okay. The next tab is your repository server tab. Now this server IP should always be the internal IP address of your server and should not be changed. The next tab is your point system. This is a plugin, so if you guys are interested in the point system, um, just give us a call or let us know and we'll be more than happy to assist you guys with this. The next tab is your time zone. We allow you in RBA to add additional time zones in case you guys are doing jobs outside of the country. If you guys are planning to do jobs outside of the country, for example, say in Central America, all you have to do is right click, set active, and then this particular time zone will be available for you in RB8. Next tab below is the confirmation eye calendar, and below that is the worksheet eye calendar. When you're sending out the job confirmations or the resource worksheets, you can choose to attach an ICS file along with the job confirmation or the resource worksheet. And with that ICS file, the client or the reporter can download it and upload it to their Outlook calendar and make it available for them on their Outlook calendar. This is basically what will be in the subject and the body of the emails for the eye calendars going out. Just like any other email, you can always add merge fields by going to Actions, Add Data Field.